Hey guys, in this video we're going to discuss how to assess cervical rotation. Hey guys, this is Chris Gerhardt, DPT, OMPT with the OAI, here to assess cervical rotation. Here we have Tim, uh, one of our DPT interns, um, so he's going to help us out with the video. So first we would have him do active range of motion, just to see where the limitation is. So we'd have him turn to the right, turn to the left. So with limited left rotation, that would cause him to open up earlier in the throw in order to see his target. So we're going to say that he has limited left rotation with some pain pulling impairment on that side. So if he would turn to the left, do it again, Tim. We have two options. So a lot of times people would say they have pulling here or some kind of pulling here. So we're going to start on this side. If he is pulling here, what I would think is some kind of muscular impairment. We can verify that by passively elevating his shoulder. Now if that takes away what he was feeling, the sensation of pain or pulling, or if he can go farther into the rotation, go ahead Tim, that's a confirmation of a muscular impairment. If he's feeling pinching on this side or if that didn't fix it, we would further assess joint either in the upper cervical, mid cervical, or at the CT junction into the thoracic spine. Felt lower down near the base of the neck, we would want to see if that is coming from his thoracic, which we focused on in our extension video on the website, or if it's in his cervical. So let's say he turns his head to the left, he points to his pain, and it's on the left side. I would have him rotate his whole body to the left. He's going to hang onto the table or the chair that he's sitting on at the point of pain, and then he would rotate his head to the right. Now if that gets, makes it feel better, that's a confirmation for cervical. He would then go, we would then confirm it, he would turn his whole body and neck to the, left, to the right, hanging on, the same thing, and then he would turn his head to the left. If that provoked it, we would then think cervical versus thoracic. So we can further assess the neck by using not only cardinal plane motion, but also um, the couple patterns. So we can, part of the SFMA screen would be bringing his chin to his collarbone on this side. And then we can follow that up with the, the passive shoulder test or that CT junction test and on the other way. And then we can see we have some clues based on what he's doing if we, know, if we want to suspect upper cervical versus lower cervical. So if he turns his head to the left, we watch his nose. We want that nose to follow the pathway at the horizon. If he deviates, a lot of times you see a deviation up like this. So in the upper cervical, the coupling pattern, flexion, side bending, and rotation, the side bending and rotation happen opposite. So you would see a deviation like this where they're coupling the same, or it's happening at the same time, instead of a nice smooth rotation. So if we see that, that deviation, then my thought would be cervical, and I would further assess that. So at C2, quick and easy test, I find C2, the ulnar part of my hand, I side bend them, and then I would rotate, and I feel what I feel, and then I would compare it side to side. So he is a little tighter, going to the left, even though we didn't see that deviation. And then we would follow that up with a passive test, differentiating between C2 and C1. So if we want to test OA, I would put my thumb on the lamina, posterior arch of C1, support the neck, yeah, support the neck, and then bring them into a rotation passively, feeling when that posterior arch hits my thumb. Drop down to C2. And based on your knowledge of anatomy, you know, C1 should move a little less than C2. And then we would follow that up with some treatment, some manual treatment. Some further testing to focus on the lower cervical would be similar to that test we just did in the upper cervical, where we would focus the motion at, at certain segments. So we start at C2, stabilizing C2, seeing the motion. Sorry, I'm on C3, seeing the motion at the C2 segment, then working our way down to feel what it feels like 
segment by segment. And then I would confirm what I felt in sitting with some testing in supine. Historically, we find that patients are more stiff in the upper cervical and the upper portion of the lower cervical and at the CT junction, just based on the way the discs degenerate in the lower cervical, which can lead to hypermobility and, and things down in the lower neck, impairments in the lower neck. Um, to follow up the sitting testing into rotation, I would put them in supine where there's a lot more relaxation of the, of the musculature. And I would do side bending testing of the lower cervical to confirm what I found in sitting. So the reason this works, you know, with rotation or with side bending, we're testing that dorsal caudal motion at each level, which is needed when you rotate. So feel it. Mm -hmm. Next one. Feel it where, where the restriction is. We would follow that up with some mobilization, reinforce it with exercise, and then give them something to do at home. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, stick with us. We're going to be posting some other videos to follow up with this one on some manual techniques that we would use in the clinic and some self-mobilization muscle stretching techniques that you guys can use at home. So if you haven't yet, um, check out our thoracic extension video that's going to be linked to the end of this video and subscribe to our channel.